아, 안녕하세요. 매일매일 운동하기를 실천하고 있는 동탄 왕코입니다. 어, 오늘은 새벽 출근 2일차 월요일이죠. 날씨가 엄청 흐려요. 지금 안개, 이거 다 미세먼지라고 한것 같은데 밖이 완전 뿌였습니다. 뿌예요. 뿌예. 그냥 뿌예요. 근데 뭐 내일부터는 다시 영하권으로 떨어지면서 다시 날씨가 좋아진다고 하니까 보통 뿌옇다라기 하기보다 스모그죠 스모그 다들 기관지 질환 조심하십시오 어차피 다들 마스크 쓰고 다니니까 그나마 좀 다행이 아닌가 싶습니다 어 사회적 거리두기 연장 다시 2주 됐고요 코스피 오늘 올랐고요 막 폭락한다고 막말 어? 많았는데 다행히 올랐네요 그리고 저는 운동을 할 겁니다. 일단 운동을 뭘할 거냐면은 지금 이거 영상 틀기 전에 스트레칭을 좀 했어요. 스트레칭을 했는데 몸이 너무 뻐근합니다 지금. 아 스트레칭을 조금 더 할게요. 몸을 좀더 풀어줘야 될것 같아. 땀이 나을 정도로 스트레칭을 했는데 스트레... 완전히 근육이 풀린 건 아니다. 라는 말을 하고 싶네요. 그리고 어저께 제 영상을 조금 봤는데 제 영상을 제가 직접 봤는데 어, 왜 이렇게 쩝쩝거리는지 제가 그 교정을 했었어요 서른 세 살에 4년 전이죠 교정을 했었는데 그때 교정을 하고 나서 유지장치를 계속 끼고 있어요 여기 안쪽 치아 안쪽에 그래서 저도 모르게 습관적으로 쩝쩝거리는 게 약간 있는 것 같습니다 역시 영상을 찍어서 말을 하면서 저의 안 좋은 습관들을 찾아서 없애야 됩니다 이게 보통 유튜브를 안 하시는 분들도 자기가 말하는 거를 영상으로 찍어서 보시면 습관, 평소에 행동하는 습관 같은 거를 알 수가 있어요 효과가 좋습니다 눈알, 눈알 굴리는 것도 엄청 시선 고정 못하고 눈알 굴리는 것도 장난 아닙니다 방송하시는 분들 정말 많은 연습을 했겠죠 예, 연습을 하고 지도를 받는 것 같은데 아, 아 그렇게 발, 받는 걸로 알고 있는데 역시 노력 없이 이루어지는 건 없습니다 여러분 일단 스트레칭 조금만 더 하고 팔굽혀펴기랑 스쿼트 하도록 하겠습니다 역시 운동할 땐 CNN이죠 developments at your fingertips. 
CNN Partner Hotels. Connected to your world. To open doors and to unlock secrets, it takes a trust. This was the Duchess's first news interview. Trust that you'll be accurate and you'll be fair. It was an unprecedented move, very eerie. All the roads have been closed off. The Apache attack helicopter. This is what Captain Wales has been flying. Do you want talks with them? Huge amount of police support. Rare access indeed. That's what it's all about. Max Foster, CNN. This is CNN. More people get their news from CNN than any other news source. The United States has just marked its deadliest month yet in the coronavirus pandemic. In January, more than 95,000 people died from COVID-19. That's more than the previous record high in December. But there is an encouraging trend. COVID-19 hospitalizations in the US dipped below 100,000 this weekend for the first time in nearly two months. So far, more than 31 million Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech doses have been administered nationwide. And this week, Johnson & Johnson is expected to file for emergency use authorization for its vaccine. Joining me now is CNN medical analyst, Dr. Esther Chu. She is a professor of emergency medicine at Oregon Health and Science University. Thank you, doctor, for being with us and for all that you do. Thanks for having me on, Rosemary. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is expected to get emergency use authorization in just a matter of days, in fact. It, it doesn't have as high an oh. efficacy rate as the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, but it's only a single shot, which of course is a real benefit here. So how big a difference uh, could this vaccine oh. option make once it's made available? Well, this is really a game changer in many ways. And you're right, the efficacy for se severe disease doesn't match the uh, extremely impressive numbers of the mRNA vaccines. But on the other hand, it seems to have 100% efficacy for hospitalizations and deaths. And that is a number that we can all stand behind. And then add on to that the fact that it's a single shot. It doesn't require those ultra cold freezing temperatures. And so those things make it such a practically easy vaccine to disseminate. So for those reasons, it'll be so good for getting to hard to reach areas, to rural areas, places where there aren't a lot of clinics or pharmacies. Um, and it will just be easier to use all of the vaccine uh, because we don't have these really rigid storage requirements. And doctor, US COVID hospitalizations have fallen below 100,000 for the first time in nearly two months and cases are down, which is all very good news. But the new variants uh, pose a threat to that encouraging trend. How concerned are you about that and what should we all be doing about it? Yeah, I think we need a little more time to really see what the impact of the variants are. They certainly have arrived on U.S. shores, um, but but you're right. We're, the second half of January, um, those were not record-breaking days, which is really encouraging. Um, it looks like we're really cresting the hill for coming out of the holidays. Um, what we have in front of us is uh, looking to see how much these variants that... Um, uh, at least, you know, the UK variant seems to be spread much more easily. Um, and then the other variants coming out, we'll really look to see what the impact is in terms of not only how easily it's transmitted, but also whether it changes severity of disease and whether it changes the efficacy of these vaccines. But no matter what, the key thing about variants is they really thrive on the element of time. We give viruses more time to mutate, and they will do that because they are survivors. So the faster we move on vaccines, um, the better we are at interrupting the chain of viruses from person to person with really good mask wearing and social distancing. Those are the things that still will win against this virus, um, no matter which variant we're talking about. Yeah, so true. And uh, doctor, in just a matter of hours, masks will be required on all transport, including planes, trains and buses. How big a difference uh, could that make, do you think? Well, this feels like something that is necessary and is long overdue. Um, just trying to interrupt a virus in places where people congregate so that they can go about their daily business, which we are desperately trying to get back to. Um, but there's also a secondary impact of that, which is just 
having people out in public places have to wear masks, that really starts us to get to get all of us on the same page nationally. So this is really the beginning of, nat of national messaging, of kind of a coordinated approach that affects pretty much everybody everywhere so that we can all start to get into this habit of mask wearing when we're around others. And hopefully everyone will follow that uh, mask wearing uh, guidance there. Dr. Esther Chu, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Well, the European Commission president says AstraZeneca has agreed to deliver an additional 9 million coronavirus vaccine doses. And this follows a furious row between the EU and the drug maker over COVID vaccine supplies. Ursula von der Leyen calls the development a step forward. But as this is happening all across Europe, frustration is growing over COVID restrictions. Capital cities, including Vienna, Budapest and Brussels all saw protests over lockdown measures on Sunday. So for more on that, I want to bring in CNN's Melissa Bell. She joins us now live from Paris. Good to see you, <coughs> Melissa. So what were you learning about these protests across Europe over the COVID restrictions, particularly as they come, these hopes of, of the, the vaccines arriving? Uh, hope of the vaccines arriving and for the time being in many parts of Europe, Rosemary, is such a shortage that essentially the vaccination campaigns have had to grind to a halt. And that anger that you saw in the streets of so many European cities, really a reflection of the fact, Rosemary, that it's now been nearly a year. That first European lockdown came at the very end of February a year ago in Italy. Who would have imagined that a year on, uh, the restrictions in place, the lockdowns in many parts, would have taken such a toll uh, on the livelihoods of so many across the European Union. <laughs> Protesters versus police. Oh. Demonstrators filled the streets of some European cities on Sunday to vent their anger over coronavirus lockdowns they say have gone on too long. In Brussels, riot police carrying batons and shields detained at least 200 people for gathering at what officials deemed an unauthorized assembly. Protesters say restrictions like a nighttime curfew and a ban on non-essential travel in and out of the country are more destructive than the virus. I'm here because I think it's not right at all what's going on. Just because of a virus, that doesn't kill that many people. Now people are dying and starving. They can't work and earn money. Thousands of people marched in Vienna despite a ban on the rally. The crowds waved Austrian flags, some calling for the government to resign as the country endures its third lockdown. We have to get rid of these nonsensical coronavirus measures, which are just destroying our economy and everything and don't make any sense. Restaurant workers in Budapest packed a city square as their own businesses remain empty. They say their livelihoods have been ruined because they can only serve takeout, which amounts to a fraction of what they need to survive. So far, authorities have avoided the escalation of protests seen last week in the Netherlands, where police turned water cannon and tear gas on rioters, who police say set off fireworks through stones and looted stores. It seems officials don't want repeated, with police in many protest cities out in full force. Now, in so many European countries at the moment, uh, Rosemary authorities are saying that the restrictions are beginning to have an effect. It's the case here in France. Authorities say they're really hoping to avoid that third uh, lockdown here. Uh, but the point is that across the European Union as well, because they're having such trouble with their vaccination campaigns, despite those extra doses uh, that you mentioned a moment ago announced by AstraZeneca, extra doses also announced by BioNTech, it's going to take such a long time for that to take an effect. And for now, really, the EU's ambition of vaccinating 70% of its population by the summer uh, looks pretty hopeful at best, Rosemary. Yeah, it is very frustrating timing, no question about it. Melissa Bell joining us live from Paris. Many thanks. I want to go to the UK now, where nearly 9 million people have received their first dose of the coronavirus vaccine. Nearly half a million people have had both doses. That is according to new government statistics released on Sunday. The country is currently giving vaccines to the elderly, those with serious underlying health conditions and frontline health and social care workers. So let's turn to CNN's Salma Abdelaziz. She is tracking this story for us live from London 
joins us now. Good to see you, Salma. Nearly 9 million people across the UK already have received their first dose of the COVID vaccine. That is very encouraging news. And what is the latest on that rollout? And of course, the case numbers and hospitalizations there. I mean, Rosemary, I finally get to share a bit of good news with you today. We have reached a major milestone. Every single care home resident in England, every single one, has now either been offered the first dose of the vaccine or received it. That's 10,000 care homes across England. Job done. Tick the box. A major crucial milestone, uh, as the Prime Minister has said. And this was an area of concern, of course. Care home residents, residents of nursing homes were among those where there was an outbreak uh, during the start of this pandemic. Uh, care home residents account for about a third of the overall death toll. So yes, this was an area that the government prioritized. They wanted to see all of these care home residents vaccinated by the end of January. That has happened on time. It means the program overall is on time. And again, another major milestone over the weekend. On Saturday, 600,000 people vaccinated, getting their first dose in a single day. So a sense that this uh, vaccination program is really moving at speed now. Breakneck speed to get as many people vaccinated as possible. Again, the focus is on the key priority groups, four priority groups, care home residents, that's done, extremely clinical, clinically vulnerable, oh. those over 70 and all frontline staff. Uh, the goal, of course, is to vaccinate all those people in time before this variant. I know you had an expert on uh, just a little bit ago. This variant takes uh, many more lives here. That's the only way to really get a grip on this variant and to regain control of the country is to continue to vaccinate people at this very quick speed, Rosemary. That is great news that you're bringing us. So we look forward to any little gems that we can share with our viewers. Many thanks. Salma Abdelaziz. Well, Russian authorities are desperate to crush demonstrations against the government, but protesters aren't letting a police crackdown stop them. What's got the Kremlin so concerned? We'll take a look. <sighs> Businesses are uh. working together like never before. Uh. On CNN, <laughs> Join me and Lenny Jokov as we crisscross the continent to show you how new connections are revolutionizing commerce in Africa. This month, connecting Africa through transport. We're building a mass ecosystem online. All new Saturday on CNN in association with a Frexin Bank. Climate change is one critical ingredient why fire emergencies have become more regular, more long-lasting, and more severe. We see warming temperatures, longer dry seasons, and extreme events like heat waves that synchronize the risk of fire across enormous landscapes. But unlike other disasters, they send their smoke high into the atmosphere and send it far downwind. And that means that fires, like we're seeing in the Western United States, have an impact on a planetary scale. One of my jobs is to use our more than 20 satellites on orbit to sort of build the puzzle about how and where and why fires burn. We can better understand these new extreme fire events. We'll be better able to predict and prepare for that next round of conditions that could lead to large and catastrophic wildfires. This is the 100 Club, our look at companies that are 100 years old or older. Visit a bar or pub anywhere in the world, and chances are it has an Anheuser-Busch product on tap. It may be one of the largest brewing companies in the world today, but it started small in 19th century Middle America St. Louis, Missouri. In 1852, there was a brewery named as the Bavarian Brewery. Eberhard Anheuser was one of the chief creditors of the brewery, and he acquired it in 1860. And then later, Adolphus Busch joined him about 1864, and then ultimately became Anheuser-Busch. The company grew and prospered through the turn of the 20th century before facing what would become its greatest challenge. Prohibition started on January 16th, 1920. It was a time in our country's uh, history where we couldn't brew our primary product. The company adapted by turning to non-alcoholic beverages. 
Company CEO Michel Dukeris says rising to the challenge is part of the corporate DNA. We went through war. We went through prohibition. We went to all the financial crisis that the country and the world faced. And the company has been always adapting. In Russia, police used harsh, heavy-handed tactics to break up nationwide protests against President Vladimir Putin's government on Sunday. One independent monitoring group says police arrested more than 5,000 people. Many protesters came out to demand the release of Mr Putin's political rival, Alexei Navalny. Our Fred Pleiken reports they also want more fundamental changes in Russia. Russian security forces showing no mercy, cracking down on protesters demanding the release of opposition leader Alexei Navalny. But some telling us they want more fundamental changes in Russia. I came here today not only because of Navalny, this man says. I think it's more because of the lack of freedom and because of this demonstrative lawlessness that's going on. I want a free election. I want a change in uh, our uh, government. Independent monitoring group OVD Info says thousands were detained across Russia. Many protesters, but also some journalists, including briefly me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, all right, it's okay, it's okay. While I was released after a few minutes, many others were not so lucky. The U.S. Secretary of State condemned what he called harsh tactics against protesters and journalists. Riot cops often wielding clubs and in some cases even tasers, like in this troubling video from Moscow. But as the protesters march through the Russian capital, many motorists honked their horns in apparent support as they drove past. Alexei Navalny, whose appeal for release from detention was denied this past week, called for the nationwide protests. Vladimir Putin's government reacted swiftly in an unprecedented move, shutting down large parts of central Moscow, including 10 subway stops, in an effort to stop the protests which authorities say are unsanctioned. But people came out in masses across this vast country, often braving freezing temperatures like in Yekaterinburg, and often faced with a harsh police response like in St. Petersburg where OVD Info says hundreds were detained. Release, release, they chanted, referring to Alexei Navalny. Navalny remains in detention and faces another court hearing this week, locked away but not silenced, as many of his supporters have vowed to continue their action. Fred Pleitgen, CNN, Moscow. <sighs> Well, much of the U.S. population will soon feel the cold sting of a winter storm. When we come back, we will check in with our meteorologist and get the latest on the powerful nor'easter threatening parts of the country. We're back in just a moment. Businesses are transforming, preparing for a future where innovation will change the way we live and work. It's going to be, and it is, the most significant development in photovoltaics in 65 years. It is an essential building block in providing uh, clean and affordable drinking water. Oh. Explore the future of business. Go to cnn.com slash business evolved in association with Vodafone Business. All new inside Africa. Follow the stories taking shape throughout the continent go inside the inventive minds the evolving places and the creative trends of the africa you need to know now inside africa only on cnn in association with zenith bank the planes that we fly on the next cnn business traveler 787 the 350-777-8220. The passenger's choice. I find it very comfortable. It's quiet. The airline's choice. Airbus and Boeing will tell you Qatar Airways tortures them before we sign an agreement. And the new generation of jetliners. I think the blended wing is delightful. It looks more like a sci-fi image. 
on the next CNN Business Traveler. What we think is that the um, 2019 traffic, we think we'll see it again in RPKs between 2023 and 2025. We had to go back to the drawing board, look at the, the magnitude of the problem, try to invent solutions, uh, sit down, think, reflect, uh, make decisions, move forward, communicate a lot, talk to many airlines, many suppliers, many governments, to navigate a situation that was uh, unprecedented. And we are making progress. And I think we will learn a lot from COVID-19, we'll be much better prepared to the next thing that could happen. And we'll be back to a different normal life, but what will we, will we think is the new normal. So I think yes, we'll be back to the normal of before, the normal of the future. Ugh. <sighs>